So who should you pick to be guardians for your children if you were to pass away while they're minors? I'm Claire at the Yanowitz Law Firm, where we help families protect what matters most, including taking care of those kiddos. Um, so today I'm here to talk to you about who you should list as a guardian for your children if you weren't alive and around to take care of them. Now, this is oftentimes a very complicated and contested matter um, for, for spouses. Um, it's a really hard decision and hard to conceive of um, someone else caring for your kids in the event both um, spouses were gone. And some, some items that should be considered when thinking about who this person would be is first, oftentimes I have clients, they want to name another couple to take care of their kids. And this other couple is oftentimes like a brother and a daughter-in-law or a sister and a, and a, um, a sister and a brother-in-law. So it's, you know, it's an in-law and it's a blood relative. Oftentimes we will just list that blood relative, that sister or that brother as the guardian. We will not list the in-law. It can be, um, it can be unclear if you list two people's names, what will happen, you know, who you're appointing to be guardian of your child. If in the event of your death, those people are divorced, they're no longer together. Did you mean your sister or did you mean your brother-in-law? What did you mean? So it's better to just list um, to list the bloodlines. And then at the event of that happening, um, the in-law could also be appointed to be guardian as well, added as a guardian. So that's something to know. Now, it can be important to consider where um, these potential guardians live. Maybe if your child is young, it doesn't matter if that child moves around somewhere else. Um, but as kids get older, surely people have friends, they have lives here. And so picking up and moving halfway across the country may or may not um, be something that you want to put your kids through. So that's something to think about. Now, I deal with a lot of clients that are international and their families are abroad and they want to list um, they want to list family members abroad. And so I think a couple of things to think about with that is, first of all, is your child a citizen of the country um, of, you know, where you want them to live? Because that is definitely a, a complicating factor, right? And then uh, I think it's always important to list a U.S. backup person, you know, in the times of COVID and pandemic and all sorts of unpredictable things going on. You don't want to only just list people abroad. You want to list people that are here locally, even if they're kind of backup, uh, because, because, because you don't, you don't want there to be an issue to take place and, um, they need to stay in the United States and you, you want to indicate who that person would be. Now, um, I wanted to mention that when children inherit, they need to inherit in a trust where somebody is in charge of their money until they're well into adulthood. And the person in charge of their money may be the same person as their guardian, or it may be a different person. If it's the same person, sometimes people like that because it's kind of all in one place, you know? Uh, the guardian says, I all of a sudden have all these kids, I need to buy a minivan. Uh, voila, I'm in charge of the money, I'll go buy a minivan instead of having to go ask somebody else for the money um, to, to go make that expenditure. Now, some people like to have someone else be in charge of the money and a, a different person be guardian so that those two roles are bestowed in two different people. And the people that are of this thought, thought method of this camp, I think think this for a couple of different reasons. First of all, people have different skill sets. Some people make good parents, but they're not good money managers. Sometimes people like to have the role in different people these roles in different people because they want to make sure that none of the money is misappropriated. When you kind of have two different heads uh, involved, um, you know, there's kind of a check and balance going on. So to make sure that that money is used for the children. Sometimes clients will say, no, I, I absolutely uh, think that the guardian will definitely 
uh, you know, spend the money on the children and not themselves, but they, they're so generous that they won't even use my money to spend it on my kids. They're going to start eating into their own pockets. And in that case, sometimes it can help to have a th neutral third party be the trustee, somebody other than the guardian, because that trustee can say, hey, you just bought a minivan. You wouldn't have done that. But for being a guardian for all these, uh, you know, three young kids that you're taking on. And so therefore you need to be compensated for it. So it's one of those things where the trustee can step in and make sure that the guardian's being adequately um, reimbursed um, and paid for expenditures that really come up because of taking on these additional children. Now, when a child is um, more in their teenage uh, ages, um, you know, a judge um, can ask the child who they want to live with. So that's something that comes into play and should be considered um, when you're picking a guardian for older children. Um, how um, roughly how guardianships work after someone dies and the guardian needs to be put in place is it doesn't happen automatically. You have to have a court hearing to put a guardian in place. And so um, before that court hearing, basically a petition is filed. There's a background check done on the guardian. Um, you know, we, the guardian, you know, shouldn't have any issues that come up as a result of that background check. And then there's a court hearing to see if anyone contests the appointment, the background check looks good, there's no red flags. And then at that hearing, um, someone would be appointed guardian of the child. If there's an emergency that happens, you can have an emergency procedure. So someone's appointed temporarily very quickly. And then you have the full blown guardianship procedure thereafter. Um, but uh, but uh, if you don't need the emergency procedure, it's, it's just, just that one initial hearing. Um, so those are some considerations when considering who should be a guardian for your children. If you liked this video, um, please uh, share this with someone who might benefit from it and um, subscribe, hit the subscribe button for our YouTube channel so that you can um, be kept abreast as we add more movies to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much.